Now the gospel lesson today is all about the baptism of John. The problem is, different than all the other gospels that talk about the baptize, baptism of, of, not John, of Jesus, John wasn't there to perform it. If you may notice in your bulletin, it, talk, it lists the lesson and it says the, the different uh, verses that are in that lesson and there's some that are missing. The lectionary writers, the people who put together what we say on Sunday morning, skip some. It starts with John talking about the fact he isn't the Messiah. Then the ones that are skipped, John gets put in jail by Herod. So obviously then later when Jesus is baptized, the next verse, John's in prison. So we really don't know in Luke's gospel who actually did the baptism. As in other gospels where it says that John did. Now Luke is really, one of the things that's really important in the gospel of Luke is to define the fact that Jesus is both divine and human. So first we have the baptism, and skies open, and God comes down and says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. No doubt. When God speaks to you directly and says, you are the, my son, it kind of makes you divine. More than the rest of us mortals. But then what Luke does is he goes into the genealogy of Jesus. Starts with Joseph, says Jesus is, is the uh, son of Joseph, and it goes all the way down through it. And it goes all the way back. Because most of the genealogies in, in the Bible stop somewhere before you get to the first person. But in this genealogy, it goes all the way back to Adam, and then, of course, to God, because God made the first man. So what Luke is trying to tell us right away is that Jesus is both human and divine. And it's very important throughout Luke's gospel. Then he began, but one of the things that we know the most about this whole baptism thing is that Jesus received the Holy Spirit. Because the next line, Jesus goes into the wilderness. <clears throat> and in the wilderness, it starts off and it says, <clears throat> when he goes into the wilderness, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes and he is tempted by the devil. Of course, Jesus doesn't take any of these temptations, like we probably would have, but Jesus, who is divine and human, said no to the devil. And then, it says, after this happened, Jesus said, again, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And he goes to Nazareth, he reads the scroll, and here I think was the important thing about what he says the Holy Spirit tells him to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know, when I first came to the Episcopal Church back in 1982, and it happened to be this one, Church of the Holy Spirit, which was the first Episcopal Church I ever really attended. I was married in the cathedral, but I really didn't understand what was going on. And so, but this was first, I thought it was kind of strange that the people who started this church named it Church of the Holy Spirit. I'd grown up in the Christian church, and we always went to the first. <laughs> and it didn't matter if we were on Sunday, we, if we, sometime, and so I can get Sunday school credit, 
and they and I went to church when we were on vacation. Normally we went to the first Christian church. And then when I married my wife, who's this cradle Episcopalian, who the 28 prayer book is still imprinted on her brain, she she explained our most of the churches that we had kind of attended all were saints. You know, like here in 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 Nebraska. We have, you know, St. Augustine's, we have St. Matthew's, we have St. Martha's, we have, you know, St. Mary's. We even have one saint, they couldn't, one church, they couldn't figure out what saint to name it, so they said, it's all saints. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, it seems strange, they name it Church of the Holy Spirit. But as I continued to go here, and come here for 10, 12 years, whatever it was, it became one of those things that was really comforting to me. Because I realized, as my faith grew, when I received my baptism, when I was 12 or 13 in that first Christian church, well, when you receive yours, either as a baby or as a teenager or as an adult, that the Holy Spirit came upon you just like it came upon Jesus. And if I ever forgot that, every Sunday when I walked into this nave, I remembered it. Gosh, what a gift those people. Some of them still here, a few, who started this church down in that little Presbyterian church hall down in Bellevue and decided to name their new church Church of the Holy Spirit. What a gift they gave to all of us who have attended here since. To know that the Holy Spirit, to hear it, that we would never forget that the Holy Spirit is what guides us on a day-to-day -day basis. Just like what guided Jesus. As Jesus says, he was full of the Holy Spirit. Think of that. The baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit came on, on him. And that same Holy Spirit comes upon us. What a gift that God has given us. But what do we do with that gift is the real question. Do we tuck it in our pocket and forget about it? Or do we live out our baptism in, through the Holy Spirit? Now, Jesus, obviously, when he received the Holy Spirit, and on the first time he had a real opportunity to proclaim it, proclaimed it through Scripture, through Isaiah, where, as I said before, he read this in, this in the synagogue, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he knew those were the things that Jesus, that the Holy Spirit was telling him, Jesus, to do. And it's the same thing the Holy Spirit is doing, telling us. Not specifically. We're probably not going to bring sight to the blind. Of us. But what the Holy Spirit through Scripture was telling Jesus and is telling us, as being guided by the Holy Spirit, we and every one of us throughout the world who have been baptized in the name of Jesus with the anointing of the Holy Spirit is called to ministry, called to do good works, to bring good news to the poor. And it's our responsibility to listen and to say, what is that ministry? And it changes. You know, it changes dramatically throughout our lives. You know, one time in our life, our, our ministry might be sit, standing at the front door and greeting greeters, greeting new people. Another time it may be laboring 
Another time, it may be going out and working at a homeless shelter. It may be praying for everyone in the congregation. Ministries abound forever. We are told and led by the Holy Spirit to say, what is our calling? Where are we called? As Jesus